Hi guys, Keith Arkenberg Farms. It is now uh, mid, late October. Um, we've passed the halfway mark, which was our last planting date for uh, lettuce and greens on the farm. So that was our last date of planting in our high tunnel for greens for the rest of the season. You can see in here, everything's all planted out. Automated side curtain starting to come up because as you can see I'm in a jacket. It's getting kind of chilly out here actually. But the next thing is, at least the way I've been kind of figuring it is, and I hope I got this right because this is not something I've done in the past, it's tried to plan out my uh, winter onions. Been uh, kind of working on it, researching it quite a bit. Um, the way most people traditionally do it is they get a winter onion set little bulbs and you put those into the ground and basically you harvest them come June next year at least that's what the plan is but those aren't available this year so instead I had to start everything from seed and coming out here got a plastic mulch layer set up ran those and that's where I'm planting my bulbs at this year or not my bulbs my onions so let me show you what I've been working on. So taking you over here to the greenhouse where I've got all my winter onion sets. Uh, apparently it got too cold in here already and it's already going back down. But here's what I've got going. I've got two varieties here. I've got a yellow onion, as you can see there, which is a high keeper from territorial seed. I also got a red onion here can't exactly remember what variety that is. Zoom me out so you can see a little better. I just started them out in flats. Um, just regular 1020 flats, about halfway full of dirt. I've got tags around here with a date on them somewhere of when I actually started them. There we go. So mid August. I've got some trays that are smaller than others and some of them haven't quite sized up like I would have liked. I've trimmed them once and I have fertilized them a couple times. So I mean the yellows really have a much better bulb size on them. That's really what I'm looking for. Where a lot of the reds do not. This tray is actually pretty good. I think I'll use this one to bring out and actually plant. The high keepers are a 150 day on, or 250 day onion. These red ones were 230, as I recall. I planted out 6,000 seeds. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I had 12 flats to start with. Just divided up uh, the 3,000 each into six trays. So that's 2,000 seeds per tray. No, 500 seeds per tray. Sprinkled them out, germinated chamber, stacked them, brought them out when they popped, and they've just been slowly growing out here by themselves. Now I've got my trays pretty well grown out. Now I need to get them out of the trays. So I've got another tray to put them in, just using a hose, a little bit of pressure. What I'm actually doing is washing the soil out of them. So I'm just going in, grabbing a bunch of them, and just spraying it until they come out in clumps like that. So I've got quite a bit of root mass on them, but I'm just keeping the clump and just laying them out on the tray and trying to keep all of the tops aligned and the roots aligned. That way it'll make it easier in the field when I get out the plant later. 
These are actually coming out really well. Now, pretty simple, grab a clump. Nice little clump there. And just keep laying them out. And I'll be able to pick them up in groupings later. It's time to plant in the field. So I'm gonna keep on this, uh, finish this tray out, and it'll be time to plant. So this is what one tray comes out to. I mean, I'm pretty thick in here. Got good sized bulbs. I like them a little bigger, but this is actually one of the better trays I've seen so far. This is actually more what I'm looking for. And then long roots, which I'll get ready to trim in the field. I get a wet paper towel, put it over it, that way nothing dries out. So now we'll go out to the field, get ready to start planting. All right, so went through, did my normal bed prep out here. Um, three passes with the uh, drop seeder of the fertilizer, which is the uh, 855, which came out to 30 pounds per 450 foot long bed. Uh, plastic mulch layer, drip tape. Drip tape is right here in line, no, right there in line. That's why I only actually got three rows on this because I used the uh, roller dibbler to punch them out. I got six inches in between rows, six inches in row, so six and six, and then six inches in between. They're staggered, that's why they make a the little triangle look here. There we go. Um, I had to offset it because my drip line laid a little off center for some reason. I'm going to have to kind of look into that a little bit more. So I got this one here. I left eight in between because I did not want to risk punching my drip tape with the roller dibbler. So when I had my other six inches over here, it was falling off the edge. I started with it and then I pulled the other wheel because it just was not centering out right. And I figured I'd rather have this work then end up losing a whole entire line that I planted basically for no reason. Now, like I said earlier, this is the first time I've done winter onions. Um, I've never heard of anybody actually planting them out like I have where I'm actually starting all my starts, extracting them and then planting them out on large scale in plastic. So this will be an experiment. We'll kind of see what happens. We won't know until June next year. So it could work. It could not work. Um, I could be filling all these holes in with plugs next year because typically the way I do my onions is uh, turn it cell flat, three seeds per cell, and then I take those because I have a clump and plug those into landscape fabric. The biggest problem I found with that is that they're in the ground so long that weeds actually come up through the landscape fabric because onions do not provide enough canopy to block anything out. So that's where I'm hoping the actual plastic here will actually work better because I have a much smaller hole that I'm working with. I mean, that's a little teeny tiny hole. That's like the size of my finger. And it didn't really dibble all that deep. Now, if I'm wanting to do that with, ooh, it's nice and wet down there, irrigated yesterday. Yeah, if I'm wanting to do that with uh, the plugs next year, I'm gonna have to either, one, make sure I get the plastic down right after I prep the bed, which this one actually came out a little bit later because uh, I ran out of plastic, had to wait for it to get here. And two, probably have to put some weight on that roller dibbler just to ensure that those dibblers go all the way in because they're big enough supposedly for a hundred cell flat. Tuner cells work great in them as well but these holes I'm getting are like that deep so they're not much but go ahead and show you the process I've been using to put these little things in the ground. And I keep my clips over here so what I'm doing I'm just grabbing a bundle of the onions, making sure, hope you can see that good, that all the bottoms are about in the same spot. I'm going through with my snips and I'm cutting off a large amount of the roots because it's very hard to get those planted in. I'm only leaving about an inch of the roots there. Then from there, it's pretty simple. Holding the bunch in one hand, grabbing one out with the other hand, 
going down in the hole kind of twist it till I hit bottom and then I'm just giving it a little push to secure it in that way I'm pushing the dirt that's on the outside of the hole around it and making sure I'm getting a good root to soil contact so here's what they're looking like individually going in a little push and if they don't stick like that one didn't I might have to go back through the other side but it's just same as always do and repeat if the holes were a little bigger I might trust a little more to just jam them into the holes and hope they set but these holes like I said aren't very deep so it kind of worries me that I'm not going to get good root to soil contact and lose a whole bunch of these starts and with the effort I'm putting in I mean I'm not really looking for production numbers right now I'm looking for validating the system the system works I can go bigger next year I can go smaller next year it doesn't particularly matter the main thing that matters is that I have good numbers and experience of what I'm doing like I already wouldn't like to know that I'm pretty sure I planted these about two weeks too late I'm really thinking in our area it should have been done planted into my flats the first week of August that way they'd have plenty of time to size up the bigger bulbs when it came time to planting so I'm just gonna keep going work my way down so I'm done so Needless to say, this is gonna take a while. All the way down, 450 feet, um, six inches, 900 onions per row all the way down, which could be really, really profitable because even if I sell those at 50 cents a piece on average, then I've got three rows and that is uh, 450 times three. So this is potentially thousand dollar bed of onions which would be nice except for the fact like I said long way and I made it that far that's about two hours of planting so I at least have two four probably about eight hours of planting onions just on this one bed but it comes out to a thousand dollars it's not bad for eight hours worth of work not counting the course of seeding and everything else was all automated so i really didn't do anything honestly to actually grow the starts out they pretty much take care of themselves with the automated watering system and everything going on here so just another thing in the food chain and hopefully it'll keep working um go ahead and comment down below if you know any other ways of making this easier because it's kind of laborious trying to get all of the starts out and then having to go through and plug them one at a time just i don't know there's got to be a little bit easier way a little bit better techniques like i said i'm not an expert at this it's the first time i've done overwinter onions and hopefully i'll be able to continue on and keep doing this every year because it seems like a really good time i mean finishing up the season just went past our last plant date so this would be another thing to plant after our last plant date when there's really not much going on anyways and things are slowing down and then next year all i gotta do is come back and harvest I mean, what could be better than that? Oh, and pull up this stupid plastic because it's still not the uh, biodegradable stuff. But that's that's a whole other story. So, hope you all like what you saw today. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all. Have a good day.